under the age of about two aren't even able to decode what those images are, what that light and, and color is on that screen. Um, they will watch it due to something called the orienting response, which is basically a reflex that allows us to protect ourselves. So they will turn to the television the same as they will turn to a cobra in their crib. So they will watch it. That does not mean they are absorbing or learning from it. Um, the concern with very young children is that as human beings, we have a competitive advantage over the rest of the animal world by the virtue of the fact that we are born with essentially a fetal brain. Our brain gets to develop in response to the environment in which it needs to function. So though we are helpless and de completely dependent on our parents for survival at birth, we get to build an architecture um, that is most efficient for dealing with the world we live in. Uh, what we know about that is that three things seem to be very important to building very powerful brains. The first is bonding with other human beings, relating to mommy, interacting, developing relationships. The second is manipulating the physical environment, stacking up blocks or getting a Cheerio into your mouth. And the third is open-ended, problem-solving, creative type of play. So a blank piece of paper and crayons or a piece of clay is very good. Unfortunately, screens don't give us any of that. Um, and when we are in a period of time when our brain is tripling in volume in the first two years, when billions of synapses, connections between neurons are being formed, and most importantly perhaps, billions of neurons are being killed off in order to um, decrease the signal to noise ratio and really know what's going on. Um, we want them in an environment that stimulates the things that are going to make a strong brain and not a, essentially a stimulus poor environment which is what screens give us. Baby videos unfortunately are not what they purport to be. Um, they claim to be educational but there's absolutely zero research done by them or anyone else um, that proves that they teach babies anything. In fact the research that we have um, appears to show that children who watch baby videos have language delays um, in early childhood, um, probably because they don't stimulate the child as much as simply playing would or interacting with other people or looking at books would. Absolutely. Um, media that are wonderful for children are music, um, books, uh, books are media after all. I think we think always of an electronic screen, but um, books are the first mass media. When Gutenberg printed the Bible, that was the first time someone could communicate to many, many people at, sa at the same time. Um, books are wonderful from very early on for a whole lot of reasons, not the least of which is that when someone reads to the child, they are bonding and relating to them. They are also showing them ways that things can be communicated between people with pictures, with words on a page. Um, music is wonderful because it allows them to use their creativity and imagination in response to that music. They learn to beat out rhythms, they learn to move to the music, they learn to the words to the music. Um, so um, those two are actually wonderful and appropriate for the kind of developmental tasks and the kind of brain development that's going on for very early children. Um, television screens, computers, etc. are tools that can be used later when the child's brain is developed further and they are able to discern the content and bring online other cognitive processes such as learning to recognize letters and words um, but for very early children there's really nothing they do other than occupy them. I approach TV watching with my own children the same way I approach nutrition with my children which is that I look to what the science shows, I look to what is beneficial to them and I use that to their advantage. What that means is that I did not put my kids in front of television when they were under the age of two. And they're both now over two, um, but they rarely see movies, and that's what they see. And I share them with them like great art. I mean, so 
for them, seeing Mary Poppins is like going to the Metropolitan Museum of Art and seeing a great painting. So for them, it's a special treat. It is something they learn to appreciate. As a filmmaker myself, who had a whole career in the film industry before I had a midlife crisis and went into medicine, um, I love great movies. And to me, they are part of the, uh, our cultural heritage and our cultural legacy to our children, um, much the way a great novel or a symphony or an opera would be. And so I think that, in fact, by um, focusing and thoughtfully using media, I'm actually embracing them more um, warmly than if by flicking on the TV and just letting it run whenever anybody's at home. Um, it's become the electronic wallpaper of our lives. And um, I don't think that folks who use television that way really appreciate good visual media. Um, it really is just part of their you know, background. I think that um, the concept of budgeting media time is a good one, but it is very developmentally linked. Um, and, and first of all, my priorities are that the other important stuff happens first. So you treat television, for example, as dessert, not as the meal. Um, the meal is time with family. Uh, the meal is doing your homework. The meal is getting enough sleep. Um, television happens if there's time for it once all of those things are taken care of. Um, so I think a good concept for it is to have a time limit as long as that time limit doesn't become what is done first. I've got to get my hour of TV time. Um, in general, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends no more than one to two hours of screen time a day. Um, obviously, in the normal American household, that's going to vary between school days and weekend days or vacation days. Um, but um, I think that when kids get older, um, engage them in the time budgeting process. In other words, what's most important to you? So that they start to use this budgeting process not as restrictive um, or punitive, but as a means of really enjoying that time when they get it and really focusing it and saying, I really, really want to watch The Simpsons. You know, I don't need to watch whatever. Um, so I think that that's an important concept is to build in that kind of self-discipline, self-restraint, and self-direction um, rather than to have it be, you know, my parents are so strict they only let me have an hour of TV. One of the things that we know is that perhaps the most protective single thing that you can do in the home is have a family meal together. Unfortunately, 63% of American homes have a television on during meals, and that completely ameliorates all the positive benefits of having a meal together. People are not talking to each other. People are not eating um, healthy foods. They're eating in response to advertising. Um, they are losing their satiety cues and their hunger cues, so they're eating to stimulate. They're distracted. They're not really paying attention. Um, so in terms of obesity, in terms of connectedness with family, in terms of all of the risk factors that grow out of people who feel unconnected with family, such as violence, anxiety, depression, uh, sexual risk behaviors, um, all of those are completely wiped out when the television goes on, unfortunately. So um, if there were two things I would say you know, to parents about how to control this force in their lives, it is no televisions in children's bedrooms and no TV on during meals.